today, what I wanted to get into is, it's a saying I adopted um, from a group called the Doug Brothers, who have a saying of higher consciousness through harder contact. Um, and uh, finding the higher self um, through, higher con through harder contact seemed to be um, a natural flow in for many of the lessons that I found over the years from martial arts. When we talk about the creativity conference and this coming together of the minds and all these wonderful, wonderful experiences, the common threads that come out between them are actually quite magical. Um, and you see how, although these disciplines become different, whether it's, and I always use the same three, painting, sculpture, or uh, video filming or whatever, um, they all have these same core ideas, core principles that we can take, not just specific to what's being done, but to the whole life thing. And martial arts happens to be the vessel uh, that I use for doing that. Um, martial warlike art being art, the art of war. That's kind of where that comes from. These days, it has a significance beyond that. Most people look at it as a self-defense discipline or something they will get involved in where they can, you know, hit someone and, and do whatever. Some people get into it for the sports side of things. But in reality, for most of the people that do martial arts, it's kind of a fun hobby. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Most people that do painting, most people that do any sort of creative endeavor, it's a fun hobby for them. But it doesn't mean it's something you do part time, something you do with what recreational time you have available to you is a lesser thing to do. It simply means that we make the most of the squeeze of the juice when we are there and we can extrapolate certain lessons from that. Why higher consciousness through harder contact? Well, there's an intrinsic honesty to martial arts. A lot of the time you can convince yourselves that you would do good at something, you could do good at this, you could do good at that if only you had the time. Martial arts doesn't allow you that conceit. It's very hard to pretend that you could do something or you're capable of doing something when somebody's punching you square in the face. So I'm going to use a little illustration of that point right now. If I get my erstwhile partner in crime, Sarah Jade, here, and we're just going to put on our chicklet gatherers, as we call them. Um, the reason I like to do gloves rather than bare knuckle is if she does accidentally punch me in the face on camera, it's marginally embarrassing versus I actually start bleeding in front of everybody. So if I'm here with Sarah Jade, and I'm going to show a very, very simple idea right now. This is called a jab catch drill, and it's something that we do in Jeet Kune Do, we do it in boxing. There's a lot of disciplines that do very, very similar things. So we isolate a specific technique, and then we work it. So one thing I want you to notice straight away is, watch this. So she goes in. I get hit if I don't move, so I instantly know there's a consequence to what I'm doing or not doing. Okay, so she comes into me here. I move backwards. I feed her one back in here. And she's feeding to me here, there, good. Nice and simple, one more time to repeat that. One, two, three. So we get a nice little rhythm going on there. We can practice that, we can do that forever. But when we want to go a little bit more serious with it, this is what we can do with that. What we got. Thank you. So as you can see from there, there's a genuine consequence to action and inaction from there. If I start to get a little bit in my own head, if I don't have a basis or a comfort in what I'm doing, I'm gonna get clocked there and that's gonna hurt me. So there's an honesty to that. I find out how good I am by doing that under a tremendous amount of pressure, but we don't start with that pressure. You can't start with that pressure, that flow, that freedom, the creativity, that everything that comes from within, has to start with a very, very small acorn. And it's from a small acorn, those bigger trees can grow. Martial arts in particular requires that all the ingredients start very, very simply, and start very, very fundamentally, because those fundamentals will carry through, they'll move forward in everything. And this is an essential lesson to take forward for us. If I put my ingredients in place, and we'll go very, very simply from here, from a martial arts perspective, the foot can go back, a hand can come up, a shoulder can drop, I sink into my stance, I can even put the tongue at the roof of my mouth, I can fire my thumbs in certain positions. 
If I don't have these ingredients in place, my feet are square, my hands are wrong, my eyes are up, I'm going to get hit and hurt badly. So we have to make sure that those very, very basic things that we do stay with us, but we don't keep bound by them because that's not where the growth comes in. This is what I found as I've been training over the years with these things. The risk of something happening or the fear of the risk of something happening will paralyze me. It will stop me trying. It will stop me achieving. And so by gradual exposure to pressure, by gradual increase of making things more difficult, we're able to then grow within ourselves. We find comfort in uncomfortable situations. And finding comfort in an uncomfortable situation is intrinsically part of life. I really hate to break this horrible news to you, but life isn't fair. It really isn't fair. This is one of the things I found out. So all we have is our ability to find comfort in those uncomfortable situations. We tend to operate from three parameters, security, approval, and control. These things govern a lot of our actions in life. When we get angry, when we get upset, when we get scared, we tend to be hitting one of these three paradigms. So when you're in the dojo in a controlled environment, I might be scared of getting hit and my actions will be dictated by that. I might want to dictate the pace of that fight. And my actions will be dictated by that. I might want everyone in the dojo to see how great I'm doing and how fast my jab is or how slick I'm moving. My actions will be dictated by that. The problem is these are all non-authentic actions, non-authentic motions. In doing that, I'm not presenting me. This isn't an expression of who I am. This isn't a show of what I can do. And this isn't going to be in any way, shape or form the right or best thing to me to do at that given moment in time because I'm putting on this facade. When we take that idea and we apply that to what we do at work, how we operate in the home, how I do my painting, my drawing, my video film, my big three films that I keep mentioning. Um, this becomes essential. When I'm doing a painting, am I concerned about how other people will judge this painting? Am I concerned about this painting being worth a certain amount of money or hitting a certain criteria? Or am I expressing myself on this canvas and seeing where that experience takes me, letting what I am, what I do and what I know go forth? And can I grow and build from that? The people that come in and train with me aren't going to be world champions unless they want to become a world champion and train like a world champion. If you want to be Bruce Lee, you have to do Bruce Lee hours. If you want to be Stan Lee, you have to do Stan Lee hours. If you want to be just me, do your just me hours. As long as you're happy with the level that you're operating at, then you're going to be fine. But that's the thing you have to decide. In the martial arts, in life, in work, in everything that we do, there is a price. There's always a price. There's a price to choosing something and there's a price to not choosing something. So I can come, it's my job, every night of the week to train in martial arts, or I can come twice a week if it's something I do occupationally. As long as I'm happy with the fact that my progress will be slower on the one than the other, that's absolutely fine too. When I start to put up these little bits and pieces that stop me achieving my potential because I let security control or approval dictate my actions, or I let something else get in the way, that's also, it's fine, it's a thing. But you have to accept the consequences of those actions. And consequences of actions in martial arts is one of the best things because consequences of me not paying attention is a hit in the face. We can also extrapolate from this the importance of the fine details. And I'm going to show you something which is quite cool. This is something you can try yourself at home. If you've got a partner or someone around, if you want to bring them in a the room, do this with me, you can do this too. But we can do it just as easy on our own. So I'm going to bring Sergei in. And I'm going to get her to put her hand out just like this, like she's just offering me her palm with a nice bent arm. Okay? Now, don't let me pull you. Okay? So you see, I've just got a single hook grip here. Don't let me pull you. Okay, you can see this is going to get frustrating for her. What I'm going to get her to do now 
and you can all try this. Get your hand and do this with it. Just let it kind of ride in its channel. Now, take your thumb, fire it in. So now you've got that same palm up, but your thumb is now firing them. Okay? Don't want to go. Okay? Don't want to pull you. Thumb up, don't want to pull you. Biomechanics of why that works, I can very briefly explain if you want. So if I go and set it to this way, so we can the camera. When she fires, or when the, the hand and the thumb is fired like that, well, not fired as the case may be, this is all arm. So the only thing she can tense up is the arm. So when she tenses the arm here, see that is all she's got. Because it's, <laughs> because it's the arm that's doing the pull. When she fires the thumb, what it actually does is it gets the tendons and everything and it connects it to the body. So what she's actually done is connected her hands to the body there. As you can see, it makes it significantly harder to move her. So at its base level, the small things make a difference. The small things are what make things happen. It's where the magic comes in, those tiny brush strokes, the attention to the detail. That's what makes everything function. If she tries to stop me pulling her by not wanting to be pulled, okay, she's gonna have a long time with that. But that small little detail, just that one little thing, has a tremendous cascade effect from everything else because she's working in unison with everything that she's got. Her body's aligned. When she combines that with a desire not to move, that's something very special. There is one level up from that if you want to see it though, okay? Don't let me move you, okay? So again, reminder, come out, don't let me move you. Good, thumb in, don't let me move you. <laughs> what happened there was a little esoteric, but there's always levels above and beyond. So just when you think you've got the one thing down, there's always another level to go to that you can get around to make things happen. But this is, again, this is the beauty not only of martial arts, but of all the creative endeavors that we have. The time we put in, the attention to those details, that's what makes the big stuff happen. Notice, if she gets pulled, if I give that arm a tug and she hasn't paid attention to that small detail, she's gonna have an issue with it. It's not gonna work for her. How does this work in a martial arts context? This is called the high reference point. This is from an art called Wing Chun Kung Fu, or also Ji Kung Do, which is my core system. Other arts have very different uh, ways of doing things, but this is an art specific thing. This is a technique called the Pak Sa. I'm going to take this hand out of the way that's blocking me. I'm going to go in. The way I can get here is I'm going to slap her at the head. She's going to block it. Boom, good. And again, she's going to block it. She's going to block it. Of course she is. I can here now. Boom, there's my shot coming in over the top like so. So we drill this from this reference point. Because if we start drilling out here, people get popped in the face a lot because their time is slightly up. So we start in here. I'm going to unfire my thumb. So I'm going to be doing open hand reference point here. I'm going to go to her. Notice she's got the thumb fired. I'm going to go to her. Watch how effective or otherwise my technique actually is here. She's catching me every single time because I can't. This is a giveaway. So that small thing makes a difference to me. I'm going to find my thumb up to there. Thank you. Just an illustration of how that small thing then extrapolates and becomes something more. So a little party piece now becomes something practical, becomes something applicable. So the idea of a small thing making a big difference shouldn't be revolutionary, but it is. Because everybody sees the end goal, they see the punch, they see the, the, the rush to get to that headshot in there. And they forget there's a whole process to go through. There's a journey as I'm going through that to get to that point where I can whip that and get that in relatively easily. And this is true for everything that we do. You don't just learn a job, you don't learn a trade, you don't learn a skill overnight. You start and you build up to that. And this is one of those parts of the puzzle. It's my favorite piece, in fact. 
The journey is always more important than the destination. So if we rush to get to a specific position, if we push ourselves to that unattainable perfect goal, we're missing so much along the way. And the chances are we're never going to get it. There was an old tale of a gentleman that went to train with the greatest swordsman in the land. And he said, I want to learn from you. And I want to become the best that I can be. And I will do anything you say to become the best. How long will it take me to get good? And the master looked at him and he said, 10 years. And he said, no, you don't understand. I'm going to sacrifice everything, my home, my family, all the things that I know, all the things that I do. I will put them on hold and I will train with you and I will get good. How long is that going to take? And the master looked at him and he said, 20 years. He said, no, 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 no. Listen to me, listen. I will do anything, any amount of time, any amount of training, anything you give me, I am willing to do to get to that level. How long is it going to take me? The master paused again and he said, 30 years, because anybody that is in that much of a hurry always learns slowly. This is what we need to recognize when it comes to our own creative spark. If someone comes into martial arts or comes into my class and wants to learn how to fight, and that's what they're focused upon, they're going to have a hard time getting there because all they're concerned with is that end result. If, however, they invest themselves in the process, they take the time to learn the hand position, they take the time to learn the foot position, they take the time to learn where the thumb goes. They'll find, they'll get to the ability to fight, but they'll get there correctly. And they'll learn so much more about themselves, so much more about the art, and so much more about everything else along the way. The attention to detail and the small things can't be overstated because that's what's gonna allow you to survive at those higher levels. The structure we put in place in our lives, in our creation, in what we do has to start with the smaller things. It's the biggest lesson I ever got. If something isn't working, fix one small thing. Because if I try and fix the whole picture, where do you start? But I can start one thing, which leads to something else, which leads to something else, which leads to something else. And the real beauty of this is, this is one of my best insights one of my teachers ever gave me. When you're trying to do something and, it's, and you've broken it down into these pieces, these little small pieces along the way, when it stops working, go back one step. If that doesn't work, go back another step and you'll find that one piece that then allows you to go forward again. If instead you're focusing on everything at once, it's a lot harder to see where those faults and problems come in. So by being aware of all the individual pieces that I'm creating, all the individual pieces of what I'm doing, all the individual pieces that I'm putting in place. It not only allows me to progress forward properly, it allows me to step one step backwards at a time to then fix going forwards again. So I might go back two, I might go back three, I might go back four, I might only go back one, but eventually you are gonna hit that one point, which allows you to fix what it is that you're doing and what it is that's not working for you. And that allows it to work going forward. When we combine this ability to focus on the little things, to make the bigger things happen. When we combine that with our ability to take a pause in our decision-making, for those of you that watched yesterday, you know what that means. For those of you that didn't watch yesterday, watch that rerun. It will come in useful for you and give you some good exercises to do. This will then allow you to have a much, much more holistic approach, not only to fighting, but to life as a whole, to what we create and to what we have open to us. Thank you very much for your time this morning, guys. I'm more than happy to take any questions you have, or you can watch Sarah J punch in the face again. I know that works for me. If anyone has any questions, I will allow you to unmute. <laughs> um, you may be getting a notification now that says it's asking you to unmute, but if you would rather just put it in the chat, go for it. 
We've got something in the chat. Someone said, thank you so much. Excellent message. Oh, you're welcome. And it, it, you know what? I mean, again, in half an hour, 20 minutes as it is, there's only so much you can actually put in to convey it across. So you have to pick those most important bits. And it's the small details. One of the things that martial arts does is it's the pressure that comes into it. And um, I'll use Sarah Jedi from May for this. This is why sometimes the questions stimulate extra activity. This is just rattan. It's like a, a fibrous reed, um, but it's still a solid stick. Um, there's a lot of martial arts out there in the Filipino world, uh, Kali, Eskila, Anis, and they all have very similar principles in both. So there's a drill you'll see called sombrada, and it looks a little like this. But this is what we call generic sombrada. So you'll see it done this way first, and then I'll give you a little issues of why I do it a little bit differently than that, okay? Thank you. Now, when your sticks are flying and everything like that, it looks kind of cool. You see that in the born identity with some blades and some batons and things going on. It looks wickedly good. But if we break that down, I'm going to do three moves. Okay, just the first three. Okay. One, two, three. At no point is any of that going to hit me. None of it's going to actually have an effect. So when she goes like the one in the air here, it's not going to hit me. So if she does and I go here, and I go here, and she goes there, I can do any of that. So I'm going through the motions because it's what I've been told to do. It's what the drill is. So there's no consequence to failure. There's no pressure there. So what am I actually doing? I'm just moving for its own sake. If, however, now I have to move because that's going to hit me. Now I'm going to hit her in the collarbone. Now she's going to hit me in the gut. I have to modify what I'm doing to take that into account. We can do that slowly still. We will notice everything now is a strike that's going to go in there. That's a small difference. That's a small change, but it's authentic to what we're doing. So my structure has to be in place. If she puts that one shot to my head and I go like this, oh, that's not gonna work for me. Notice what I did is the tip on my stick was down. Looks like it shouldn't be a big deal. If she comes in here, tip of my stick is up. If she pushes, I can hold that. If I go down and she pushes, I can't hold that. Small difference makes a difference between me getting cracked in the skull and me not getting cracked in the skull. And that's, again, what martial arts has taught me. Those small things that seem so unimportant are everything. It's the pressure that will reveal that. That brings us to a beautiful stopping point. We are actually at our five minute limit. Um, if you have any final words um, to say, now is the chance. Um, this applies to everyone in the room as well. Um, otherwise, I will close it out. So go ahead, say your piece or forever hold it. <laughs> I'll get it in quickly. Thank you very much for giving up your precious time this morning, guys. I appreciate that. I hope there was some benefit to what I passed on. I hope there's something you can take from that, even if it's to say, yeah, I don't believe in that. I think he's wrong. At least that's something that you've tested and experienced and can move on with a conclusion that you've drawn from it. Um, big thank you to the Creativity Conference uh, for helping me put this on. If you're interested in finding out more, you can be contacted at havocfighting.gmail.com or esteemandhavoc.com, um, martial arts. Um, and yeah, it's, I answer any questions. I'll always love meeting new people. And once again, thank you for your time. Pay attention to the small things and small things will pay attention to you. Mm -hmm.